Hmm. So I'm gonna adjust what's equivalent to his ankle. That's the one. Sorry, boo boo. Hi, this is Dr. Doug Willen, and if you're a fan of uh, House of Cairo channel, you are um, gonna have a treat today of a very unusual video. Um, today, we are gonna be adjusting a cat, and uh, let's just jump right in. So the patient is a cat. He's uh, 16 years old, his name is Neo. He was named after uh, the movie Matrix. And a uh, little background on Neo. Neo was a rescue cat 16 years ago in Brooklyn, New York. And uh, what they knew about him at the shelter was that he fell out of a window pretty high up of uh, an apartment building. And he had a fractured uh, left front paw when, they, uh, when Melissa rescued him. And uh, so uh, he's a great cat. And even at the age of 16, he's known to have a really agile body. Uh, he has the ability to, to jump up on the kitchen counter with no problem. And then uh, one morning, uh, about 10 days ago, he uh, was not only limping, but he was crippled up with pain. He could only walk a few steps before he collapsed. His whole back was hunched up with pain and his left leg could hardly support any weight. I'm gonna show you a little clip of that in a second, but um, Melissa, who's been a client of mine, that's the human, in my human practice, uh, for several years, she called me up because she lives nearby where I live in Brooklyn and said, uh, you wouldn't believe what happened to one of my cats. Is there anything you could do? So um, this is him uh, later that day coming by, but, but first let's take a look at what he looked like. I said, please, um, with your camera, just capture what I'm, you know, what I'm gonna be facing. So as you can see, that's not a cat that's actually uh, ready to make a jump onto a kitchen counter. A little background on me. Um, I've been a chiropractor in New York City for 22 years. And about a year and a half ago, I started uh, making a new goal, which is uh, animal chiropractic. And I uh, finished uh, a uh, year-long intensive study uh, put out by the AVCA, Animal Veterinary and Chiropractic Association and um, I've been trained on horses, dogs, and they told us you're really not gonna see many cats because cats will not hold still for an adjustment. But if you ever do get to work on a cat, you have to be fast because they will thrash around and they will try to bite you or cut you. So you have to be able to work with the owner and hopefully they can contain it. So I told Melissa to bring maybe a towel or something that the cat's comfortable with and we're gonna swaddle them up like a baby and she's gonna hold them tight. I'll pay, palpate down the back, hopefully look for a few areas that might be compromising uh, the way he's feeling and either correct or improve. And this whole treatment, even though it's gonna take you 25 minutes to get to my apartment, but this whole treatment might only take seven to 10 seconds. And she said, you don't understand Neo. Neo actually will um, you know, do whatever. He'll, he'll stand there for an adjustment. And I'm like, well, let's try. So she bought him by, and this is the first treatment, the same day. Oh, the same day. So we have Neo, he's a 16 year old cat. Um, he was in the movie Matrix, and played the character Neo. <laughs> and uh, today he started limping, right? Mm -hmm. And falling. Yeah. You know. So I'm feeling his atlas. I'm gonna adjust his atlas right now because I feel something. 
One more time. Got it. His lower neck cervicals feel good. Here I got something at L2. Yeah, you can hold his face mm -hmm. a little bit. He's letting me work on him. All his lumbars are tight. That's the tender one. Okay. So right now I'm on his um, tuber sacralis, which is where his ilium and sacrum meet. Stand them up a little bit. So one of the things we want to look at is, like you can take his feet. He doesn't want to be touching that foot too much. But he does have, uh, he's getting proprio receptive contact. Like I'm trying to turn his foot over, knuckle it down. And he does respond to that, so that's nice. I'm going to extend this leg back. And he lets me do that. I'm gonna extend this leg back. Beautiful arabesque, right? Now look, when I bring the leg, left leg all the way back, he lets me hold it there. When I bring the right leg all the way back. Well, he gave it to me that time. He jerked it last time. Okay. I can't believe he's letting me do all this without squirming too much. I'm rechecking the lumbars. So here's L5. Four, three, Two. Got it. Did you hear that crack? Yeah. Yeah, So that was T12 that clicked. Hold his head again. I also get a little bit of an anterior inferior ilium. Excuse me. Let's check his knees. That one he doesn't like so much, does he? I noticed that yesterday when we started. That's the foot he seems to favor too on the ground. So I'm getting a lot in the back left leg. The knee feels okay. The hip feels okay. The fetlock or ankle. He doesn't like that one. Just going through everything, every little thing. Feeling it, palpating, motion palpating.
Hmm. So I'm going to adjust what's equivalent to his ankle. No. That's the one. Sorry, boo boo. Got it. That's the one that hurts the most. Okay. Let's let him walk around on the ground again, okay? Oh, that was the leg to the um, tripod just fell. So he's still very tentative. But I adjusted. It's definitely that back left that is giving mm -hmm. him the most problem right now. I can see it too, yeah. He doesn't want to totally put weight on it. Mm -hmm. I think he kind of sprained that ankle. Mm. Let's get him up one more time. It's a long video, right? Mm -hmm. I can't believe he just stands there for me. What's so, what's, one thing I noticed is he doesn't have any neurological deficit. Mm -hmm. Um, meaning he, he can feel placement on the floor. He has placement. I'm going to do a little bit more. I'm going to do sacral base left. Got it. That's the worst one, is that back? Good, one more. Good. Okay, that's it for today. We're gonna have to recheck them in a couple of days, okay? okay? So, um, you know, honestly, I don't have a lot of experience uh, working with cats. We studied cats. I know the anatomy, the physiology, the neurology, pathology. Uh, it was quite an extensive program, but we just didn't get our hands on a lot of cats. And like I said, if anything, my veterinary mentors told me that you're not very likely going to be able to keep your hands on them very long because they're going to squirm away or they'll try to cut you. And uh, Neil, for some reason, would just let me work on him. Uh, here's a funny picture of him upside down, but um, you know, so I didn't know how he would respond. I can't say, hey, you know, I've I've worked with all these cats, and this is what I would, you know, this is what I've seen in my experience. I've worked with a lot of dogs. I've worked with horses for over, you know, well over a year now. I've worked also in Texas with some rodeo horses, barrel racing horses, reining horses, other type of performance horses and you know mostly uh, recreational horses but also performance horses so i i can tell you how i'd expect them to respond so i sent uh, melissa the human mother um a um a text and um this is on the second day the next day i said good morning how is neo doing and she said good morning he's doing okay he looks less hunched over to me um when he walks but he's still a little unsteady on the feet I've seen him stumble a couple of times, but still favoring that one paw in the back. But I do think he's standing a little better. So, um, uh, this is now, that was the morning. This is, you know, five, six hours later. We're still uh, texting back and forth. This is the very next day. I'm curious, she's curious. She says, definitely an improvement. You know what I noticed, she writes, he seems to be responding to noise again today. Is it possible whatever you did in his neck at, at first could have helped that? He has not responded to sound in months. And I said that the Atlas adjustment up top that I did in the very beginning of the video uh, has the potential to help the five senses, hearing, smell, taste, sight, and touch. And you know, and it got me thinking because, you know, first year chiropractic students, we all learn about the very first chiropractic patient who was a name named William Harvey Lillard. Uh, and this was in um, Davenport, Iowa. I guess he was—he died in Seattle, but but the story takes place in Davenport. 
and um, he got the very first recorded chiropractic adjustment. And um, I think uh, in the late 1800s, and his main concern, other than a lump on his neck or back, wherever the spot was, was he was he was deaf. And after the adjustment, he was able to hear the trolley cars go by. And so as the legend goes, you know, I don't know if that's mythology or, or how much of that documentation can be verified. But what was interesting is it started to open our minds as, as chiropractic students that not just the neck pain, back pain, um, rib pain, knee pain, but you also have a chance to work with the autonomic nervous system and you never know how far reaching that could be once you take stress off the autonomic nerves. And to, to give you an idea, I'm not gonna do a lot, but the different spinal cord levels go to the stomach and to the ear and so I can move my fingers, I can flex my biceps, um, but I can't wiggle my liver. So I don't have conscious control of my organs. But when you work on the segments of the spine, you're not only working on the nerves that go to the muscles that you can control, but you're also working on branches of those nerves that can go to the liver, to the ear, to the, um, to the kidney, to the bladder, to the reproductive organs. So you never really know how far reaching a chiropractic adjustment will be above and beyond the musculoskeletal ramifications of just neck pain, back pain. And you know, just as a, just a point of reference, um, we have cranial nerves that come out of the base of, well, out of the, the base of the skull is a big opening called the foramen magnum. And that's where your brain stem comes down and joins up becoming the spinal cord. And one of the cranial nerves, we have 12 of them, is called the vestibulocochlear nerve. And the vestibulocochlear nerve, uh, which is cranial nerve eight of the 12, is known as the eighth cranial nerve. It transmits sound. And it also has a lot to do with balance and equilibrium. And when I was adjusting, the very first thing I adjusted, as you can see if you look back, is I adjusted his atlas, which is the first bone. And that's exactly where the, um, the vestibulocochlear nerve is emanating. Uh, so, you know, take it for what it is, but um, it got me curious, you know. I mean, I can't go back and, and meet Neo months ago when he didn't have response to sound, but it was just fun to, uh, to do this. My main concern was get him out of pain and get him walking normally again. And Melissa's main goal was hopefully to see him jump again because that was kind of her benchmark for if he was really all right. So, um, so... Day four, uh, July 25th, I text her around uh, 2.45 p.m. Please let me know how Neo's doing today. Can he jump on things? And she said he's walking around but still a little wobbly on his feet. He's made some short jumps like my couch. I notice he slips a little when he jumps off. So he's still... still. Neo. Yeah. So I don't know, he looked like he was walking pretty good there by day four. Um, so I said, is he still responding to sound at my next text message on day four? And then we were discussing when I could get him back to see me because one of the things I told her and I tell everybody whether they have a dog or a cat or a horse is really should commit to at least three treatments because we're really working with that nervous system as well as the musculoskeletal system and it does need a few days to unfold. So even though I've only adjusted Neo once four days prior, he's still integrating the input that we put into his central nervous system, his peripheral nervous system, his proprioceptors, his mechanoreceptors. We fired a lot into his little nervous system. So she said, okay, I'll definitely will be bringing him by. And yes, he is still responding to sound. I asked her to get me a video of that if possible. She would look for it. And I, you know, I told her, let's do two more adjustments this week and do a good job. So she got a video of Neo responding to sound. Watch this next. Neo. Neo. I thought that was pretty funny. Um, 
So uh, we exchanged again. You can bring him by tomorrow. Um, great, please bring his towel, you know, to swaddle him just in case he doesn't let me work on him again. Um, and then, you know, my, my crazy sense of humor, tell him I don't accept credit cards. He's gonna have to write me a review at least. And, um, but I said I will take a dead mouse if he's got one because I do like some sort of exchange um, and Neo. Okay, we're back for our second visit. And just to recap, Neo could not walk at all. Uh, last Tuesday, he was hunched over and he had his first adjustment last Wednesday night. Okay, and how did he respond? Well, he's walking much better. Is he able to jump at all? He's jumping a little bit onto to, uh, shorter surfaces. Okay, and um, does it look like he's dragging a leg now or is he? I notice he's a little unsteady still on this leg over here. Back left yeah. leg. All right. And then when he's hurting, he hunches his back quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right, so let's do it. So what I find fascinating or astonishing is that he lets me work on it. Because <laughs> everything, when I was studying um, animal chiropractic, they said cats don't typically let you work on them. They go crazy. Really? Well, mm -hmm. he's very useful. So I'm going to go back to some of the key spots that we found the first time. And this was a spot, so I'm gonna put my hand under his belly because if you don't support or stabilize, there it just popped. So I went and got that bo same bone that popped last time, which was T12. And I'm moving down. I'm in the lumbars, I'm at L5 right there. I'm on the sacral base. I'm just palpating, I'm motioning it. This is the uh, tuber sacralis, which is where the um, sacrum and the ilium meet up. Let's come up the spine. So it, it did click, the T12 clicked mm -hmm. again. And I think that's the one that makes his back hunch up when he's in pain. Mm -hmm. I'm palpating every single spinous, looking for ones that are tight, fixated. Oops, sorry, boo. So sometimes you have to, when you're between the shoulder blades, you wanna get them off. You don't want them weight bearing on the front legs. There we go. Hold him up here. So I'm gonna pick up his legs. So I'm gonna pick up both legs, okay? Mm -hmm. Just look. Now the right leg's really drawing short. No, it's the left leg is short. Okay, so left leg's short. Turn his head this way a little bit. That's good, and let's try it again. Okay, so he has the left atlas, so I'm gonna just get in and adjust the atlas. One more, there it goes. And so I adjusted left superior atlas, and he also had um, he had an inferior atlas as well. So the, the atlas also tilted down. Now we're gonna look at the back leg, which is the one he's limping on. So now I'm on his knee. I'm gonna pull the leg. Let's have him stand up again. I'm gonna stretch that leg back. Good, and one more time. Good. I'm gonna adjust his uh, ilium on the left. So this is an AI ilium on the left. One more, got it. Leg motioning a little better. Let's have him sit down on his side. Good. I'm doing each flangey. Don't know why he's such a good cat, right? So he's 16 years old. His name is Neo, N-E-O, like from the Matrix. And um, motioning every little joint. Here's the knee again. 
step good checking the tail now let's check the front legs too okay because we didn't get to look at those last time Okay, let's have him face the camera. Or turn this. Okay. Help me control. Okay, so let's do front leg. Front leg. Let's do a little skin, little facial tension. And then I want to also check his lower cervicals, C2, let's turn his head this way, good, and then he's all good there. He's like a surprisingly young cat for a 16 year old, mm. but you said he jumps well typically, right? Yeah. yeah. All right, so let's get him on the ground. See him walk this time. You can walk around with them. Let's bring them again. Let's do that again. And he's under the couch. Okay. So, still got to get him to jump. And uh, that is a um, big goal. So I did um, reach out to them the next day. Um, I mean, Neo and Melissa, of course. And she did have, um, you know, some. I wanted to get some more videos of, of him walking and to, to compare. And because it's been so many days now, um, I'm going to put up a, a quick flash of what he looked like on that first day again. So remember the first day he was hunched she said on day eight when she said well, at least he's comfortable enough to chill out in weird positions again because when he was in pain he hardly could find a position to lay down in and now he almost looks like a kitten here doesn't he um you know and that's another thing you can notice with your pets if they wince when you pet them or they don't sit right or they're reluctant to sit where they're reluctant to get into their floppy positions that might be an indication that something's off but like I said, a big goal for Melissa was, okay, I mean, at 16 years old, we're just happy that the cat's not in pain and not limping and walking with a fluid motion. But I said, why don't you test him? I mean, let's test him today. See if you can get a little treat, put it on the counter, let's try it, and we did. And this is him attempting a jump. Are you guys ready? Here it is. That's him, that's Neo. Neo did the jump, yay Neo. So within nine days, two treatments, Neo, uh, you know, not perfectly, but you know, what is 16 years old in cat years? I don't even know, but I dare you to try to jump on your counter when you're that old in cat years. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope to make a few more videos like this and um, I hope you enjoyed it. Leave comments. I know it's a longer video, but I wanted to show you the process. I could have just showed you, you know, a two minute video on highlights, but a lot of people that text me and comment and, and are in touch with me say that they do like the process. They want to know what we're thinking, what the approach is, what the background, what, what's the, the mechanism of treatment. And so I tried to give you that video today. 
And uh, thanks a lot, and we'll see you around.